Okay then, we are at the drill press and I've got a chunk of ebonite that's been cut off used a what's known as a center finder you can see the silver lines those are just pencil marks and this is known as a center finder it's the type of thing that you would need if you use a drill press uh, finding the center on a lathe is an automatic procedure if you're familiar with lathes you know you don't have to find the center it it, it does it for you as a matter of physics not so with a drill press so you need that hand tool and a word about the size of the uh, ebonite here is you want to be sure that you've got plenty of excess around the edge or surplus the reason being that when it's stored for a good while the solid rods of this stuff can actually begin to oxidize uh, before they're shaped into stems and so for a millimeter or so you can get some green haze in a brand new stem that's never been on a pipe before because the dimensions of the finished stem were too close to the outside of the piece of rod and it's very easy to avoid that just go a millimeter or two larger in diameter than you expect to actually need and uh, you'll never have that problem and it's a nasty little problem because you don't discover it's uh, it exists that uh, oxidation until you're done with everything and you're in the final uh, polishing stage and you realize there's a patch of green that won't go away well <laughs> welcome to hard uh, you know rough road time there but anyway so this mark here the diamond or triangle is the depth or the length of the uh, tenon plus about a millimeter because we're going to square everything up we want a little extra length the tape on the end of this is extra it's going to be a a holding wheel though I shape with a tool that it works better if you've got the ability to rotate the sock the way I'm doing here and the uh, silver marks the pencil marks right there dead center that's where I took some measurements of the inside of this to determine the airway diameter and where it began to skinny down and uh, came up with we're going to take this drill bit to the where the tape begins here and anyway it's yeah there we go and past that point it's going to be this skinny little guy the rest of the way and because of the peculiar way that I uh, uh, shape a lot of stuff and polish things we're going to increase the diameter of the airway by three thousandths of an inch so that I can do a my spinning trick to get it uh, shined up you've seen it before but I'll do it again when the time's right because I do it all the time all right now the uh, a word also before I begin about drill presses a fair number of people have wanted to know about working with a drill press as opposed to a lathe and I strongly of the opinion that for repair work but only for repair work that a drill press is the more flexible instrument tool the catch being not all drill presses are created equal by a long shot the uh, back in the day once upon a time humans did all manufacturing if you had a bunch of tools in a shop you had humans running them and those were professional grade high precision uh, drill presses and whatever else they used well now that they use CNC machines computer controlled machines for all of that type of thing the need for top quality uh, machine grade we'll call them uh, manually controlled tools is very low and the stuff that you get at the Home Depot most of those kinds of tools are made of aluminum anymore they're not even iron 
Uh, the drill press design is intrinsically weak, the C-shape. So the only way to get a drill press that's worthy of the name, if you're going to use it on a daily basis and do a lot of precision stuff with it like we're doing here, uh, find a surplus unit from a manufacturing plant somewhere. Now if you live back east, you're in the, the, the manufacturing belt, you won't have any trouble finding that kind of a thing. Often you can go pick them up for the price of, of just getting it off their hands because it's scrap iron. If you're out west where cities are far apart and there wasn't much manufacturing, that's a little different. But uh, it's just, welcome to the world. You're going to have to figure out how to do that or come up with one. I do not recommend that you try to make a go of a cheap aluminum drill press from a, a Home Depot or something. They will frustrate you endlessly. You won't get what you're hoping to get out of them and you'll end up throwing it away or giving it away or selling it in the newspaper and uh, or Craigslist anymore and going for a, a solid chunk of iron. And uh, uh, old American machines are quite good. Uh, this particular one you're looking at here was a uh, uh, Swedish made model. The company's called Arboga, A-R-B-O-G-A. -A. And this uh, contraption here, this XY table, and the plates and all that, that's uh, uh, custom made. That was fabricated by a machinist friend up in uh, Washington State. And uh, I might do a little tape thing on just how that's, how that's put together because you need something like this or you'll never find center, which is what it's all about in repair work. So, okay, I'm going to uh, uh, power down the camera and uh, get this set up ready to drill. Uh, the, the view of the camera, by the way, is, is literally what I'm... Uh, it's directly between me, my eye, and the work. So I'm, I can actually work by looking at the screen. In fact, I can't not do it that way because uh, the camera's in the way. So you're getting a true bird's eye view. Uh, repair cam, we'll call it. So anyhow, I thought it might be fun to see it that way because in earlier tapes or videos, I had it hanging out to the one side at some distance because it's all I could figure it out to do at the time. I think this will be more fun for you to watch. So I'm going to uh, power it down, um, get the thing ready to drill, and we'll take it from there.